and he starting asking him this hand how many molotov you uh, produced by it he said i didn't do this said, molotov cocktails exactly uh, he denied that he's doing this but uh, they said uh, uh, yeah we know why you are denying now they ask them who are you from which uh, kind of uh, security they say this is none of your business we brought here and we will show you and they start taking their clothes out they took their clothes off and they make them naked 100% completely naked ev- even no underwear and they told them we brought you here to make uh, sex with you to make sex with you yeah. so they're threatening to rape them exactly for several years unemployed youth in shia villages have blocked roads burnt tires, hurled stones, and occasionally Molotov cocktails. They are being manipulated, the government believes, by shadowy forces. The rioting has pretty much stopped now. The alleged kidnapping and abuse would seem to have had its desired effect. But these two boys, who say they were not involved in any disturbances, told me they were angry. One said, I want to do to them what they did to me. On the way back to the hotel... I ask Antoine Oseda what he makes of the testimonies he's taken. There are those who will say you've come at, at the behest of a banned human rights organization, that in fact uh, the government has behaved appropriately, that these people were terrorists and that they have been treated uh, fairly, and that you basically are uh, prejudiced in your views. What do you say to those kinds of charges? Well, what I say is that first I have seen pictures, and then that's... I always ask people for uh, precise facts and precise dates. Tonight I saw like 10 families who told me the same story, you know, with little differences, but always the same story and always the same chronological pattern, which uh, makes me say that it is true. Again, as an outsider, are you at all confident that uh, these uh, defendants will receive a fair trial? (laughs) No, I'm absolutely not confident on this. It's day two, and we want to meet the wife and family of Ali Abdulimam, the Bahraini blogger. He's been a consistent critic of the government. He was arrested a couple of weeks after most of the other defendants. Ali's last post was a call to support them. He has a global base of fellow human rights bloggers, but the journey to meet Ali's family proves difficult. They still have you, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't you let us out so it's very clear that you have let us out and they can see that. Just just right here is good. I mean, just, yeah, just let us out here. That's fine. Because I want them to see that you have let us out. Okay. And I'm very sorry uh, for your trouble. Yeah, okay. Shukran. The cars following us have frightened our driver. We're concerned for his safety and tell him to drop us at the entrance to a shopping mall. Then we call the family. Well, we're standing in this shopping mall and we're... Uh, just waiting for the wife of the detainee to pick us up. We told her the situation, our concerns for her. Uh, she's determined, however, to tell her story and to, and to take uh, whatever risks are necessary to do that. Two young women, one holding a baby, arrive and we get in the car. We're still being followed. Our driver is Ali's wife, Janan Al-Arabi. It's so uh, frustrating that you feel that you're not secure that somebody is like watching you somebody they make us feel that we are not really secure that's so frustrating okay you turn it's the extreme actually it's the, the extreme now Amal, do you have your mobile with you yeah these are ali's uh, nieces so we're just going into the house and uh, um Someone else is going to drive the car around and hopefully we'll throw our pursuers off and uh, keep them away from the family. Thank you. This is Ali's mother and this is Ali's sister-in-law. Shanan has nine-month-old twin girls and a five-year-old boy. She is allowed one prison visit a week with the children. One lady there was searching my son. I told him that she's checking your clothes. She thinks that your clothes are very nice. She wants to ask me where can I get these clothes for her son. I have twins, Zahra and Sarah. They are nine months old. 
they are growing up and I feel so sorry that they started to know now be familiar with faces around them and I feel so sorry that they don't know their dad that's why I keep taking them with me despite all the difficulties that I I see what has Ali been charged with He has been charged that he spread false information about the government. He's a blogger, he's a writer, he's a journalist. Ali does not belong to any political party. He just writes his opinion. He has a free pen. That's exactly his crime. He has a free pen. Do you know if Ali's been tortured? Yes. The first trial, all the detainees, they came, they were very scared, they've been threatened, and they warned them not to speak about any mis- treatment, any torture. But those brave heroes actually decided to all stand up and say, we've been really tortured. And everyone was talking about exactly the way they've been torturing him. Despite the fact that they've been threatened that if you speak of any torture, we will even torture you more. My husband said that I've been tortured. They did not allow me to see my lawyer. I've been threatened to lose my job and They promised it, and they did this. He's lost his job. He lost his job, yes. And he also told him that I will lose my my job as well. All of them, the, the 23 detainees, are all victims. They are all good people who have good jobs, good people doing great jobs in the society, volunteering to the society. They are all innocent. It's day three, and by now we're accustomed to our minders. They follow in two cars as we go to meet with members of the Shia political party, Al-Wafaq. In the recent election, Al-Wafaq won 18 seats out of 40 in a parliament with limited powers. Those 18 seats were secured with 67% of the votes cast. The other 22 pro-government seats were won with just 37%. Gerrymandering is widespread and ensures that the Shia party will never have a parliamentary majority. My name is Dr. Jassim Hussain. I'm a member of uh, al Wafaq blog and member of Finance and Economic Committee in, in the Parliament. Now, the current situation in Bahrain, how do you view it and, uh, as a member of the party, but also as an economist? What's going on is very dangerous to the, to the well-being of Bahrain's economy. Uh, this was the last thing we really need of, really. But so I'm quite worried. Now, the government is very conscious of its international image, uh, how the West in particular sees Bahrain. You're saying that, that this trial and the current climate, uh, security climate, uh, and the clampdown and the arrests is, is damaging that image. It's already damaged, damaged so much, really. Uh, the authorities have failed to convince the general public and the international environment that there was a serious terrorism case in Bahrain. So they failed the marketing test. Well, you know, I, I suspect many of the of the defendants, 23 here, uh, have been charged, two in absentia. Are these men terrorists? They are certainly not, not terrorists whatsoever. They are uh, very ordinary citizens who, who believe in, uh, in the political process. They have some grievances. They are not happy with the Constitution. They like to see really a parliament with serious powers. So we could call them, what, critics of the government? Critics, possibly sharp critics, you know, but definitely are critics. And certainly they are no terrorists. Day four, and surprisingly, we've secured an interview with a government minister, Dr. Majid Alalawi, the Minister of Labour. He's not a senior member of the cabinet. Those posts are reserved for the ruling Al Halifa family. But he has agreed to talk to us. Do you think that the Shia have particular uh, difficulties in securing jobs and getting jobs in, for example, certain ministers? Well, I mean, I'm a minister, and I'm a Shia myself. And we have uh, Shia ministers, we have Shia judges, we have Shia in many parts of the government. The Wafaq itself has an 18 MP out of 40 MPs. We have to contribute to the development of Bahrain. And I think if you keep just feeling uh, oppressed all the time, you cannot move on. I think discussions with me should be on Ministry of Labor. And I think political questions should, should go to the to those concerns. That is a political question, you feel, that talking about the issue yes, of discrimination? Yes, of course. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, you mentioned uh, Al-Wafaq uh, Jussain Hussein, who's an economist. He said he's concerned that the global image of Bahrain suffers. And he says that is damaging the, the economy. How? How does it damage the economy if we apply the law? 
Well, of course, the, the allegation of torture is a, very, is a very damaging one, is it not? I hope that the image of Bahrain has been uh, brightened by the fact that this is the third election we have, free and fair. No one has accused the government of uh, you know, rigging the elections. Uh, in, the, in the Arab world, to have an election free and fair is something we should boost about. And I think there are a number of institutions in the country that I think they are guarantee for, for example, if you think of the time I was in the opposition, again, you're dragging me to uh, an area which is not my area, but if you think of the time I was in the opposition, we do not have a constitutional court, we do not have a parliament, we had political uh, prisoners, we had state security law, state security court. At the moment, we don't have state security court. And I think as for torture, you have to go to the Ministry of Interior and ask them. We get a call from the office dealing with foreign press and think perhaps the doors will open. We'll get our equipment back. Key ministers will talk to us about the very serious allegations we want to put to them. We've just left the office of the Director General for Press and Foreign Media in the Information Affairs Authority, or IAA. He's a rather senior member of the royal family. He's told us we cannot film and record in Bahrain, that it is illegal to do so without the permission of the government. Effectively, that means him. And he's not going to give us that permission. We can, however, pick up our impounded recording equipment, held at the airport since we arrived, when we leave Bahrain. Sheikh Abdullah used to be the deputy head of the National Security Apparatus, an organization like the IAA, not answerable to Parliament, answerable only to the royal family. The organization that's had its plainclothes operatives following us since we arrived. After our return, we asked the government of Bahrain for the response to allegations of the torture of detainees, of the treatment of the prisoners' families, and of the reports of children and young men allegedly kidnapped and beaten. In response two days ahead of transmission, the government sent us audio clips of interviews conducted by Prisons Unknown before the trial of the 23 began. The first clip is Brigadier Tariq Hassan Issa al-Hassan of the Bahrain Police. These detainees are charged of being part of a network that uh, is inciting juveniles and youths to form groups to commit acts of terror, vandalism, violence and sabotage within the country. They are actually currently being held at a low security prison which actually observes inter UN and international standards. They uh, have the rights to have visits from their families and friends and legal counselors. They uh, exercise, they have time to read and educational activities allowed within the uh, boundaries of law. The second is the Justice Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Abdullah al Khalifa. The courts of Bahrain, like any other courts in the world, do not accept any evidence that have been collected through torture or inhumane or degrading treatment to any accused is not acceptable in Bahraini courts and is not even acceptable as an evidence in the public prosecution. In an attached written release, the government stated that allegations regarding extrajudicial kidnappings are wholly untrue and malicious. It did not respond to questions about why we were under surveillance. While we're still in Bahrain, I asked Yanan al Arabi, the Bahraini blogger's wife, if she was worried about repercussions she could face talking to the BBC. I am concerned, definitely. I'm worried about my kids as well. I'm really worried about my son. He is very smart and he keeps asking me questions that I don't have any answers for them. I am worried, but, well, then, you are worried, you know, that's right, but is the, the right thing is just to stop and not doing anything? Yeah, definitely, I'm worried, but I don't want to stop. I'll just do my best, and I will support my husband, and I'll, I'll defend him because I totally believe he's innocent. We should be proud that we have people like him who really did everything to help the community and help the society. I am worried. I am worried. I'm concerned. But I might be even more worried and more concerned if I don't do anything. Crossing Continents was produced and presented by Bill Law. Next week, David Goldblatt reports on how wrestling has become the national obsession in Senegal.